Hey guys, welcome back to Callus Draft Duel Round of 32. This is going to be the last match from this round that I'm going to be covering, and I only did five matches and five drafts from this round, but obviously in a round of 32, there were 16 matches and 16 drafts. So there's a hell of a lot more in this round that I'm not covering than I am covering, and if you don't want to miss that, the best way to do that is to come into my Discord server and check out all the replays. There's a link in the description to the Discord server, and as with all the other battles, there is a link in the description as well to my review video of their draft. It's Bowl, and it's Jumpy23, Jumpy playing on I'm the Dome Ace. And as all matches are in this tournament, it is a best of three. So let's get into it. It's going to be Bull on the bottom and Jumpy on the top. Jinx on Glalie, and they're both going to opt to stay in. A little bit dangerous for both players. On one hand, Bull is allowing Jumpy to get spikes down immediately, which is always a threat. On the other hand, Jumpy is allowing Bull to calm mind up potentially multiple times. So it can get pretty sticky here. I'm not sure whose position I like. Certainly if there is a spinner in the back for Bull, then this is probably good for him. But Jumpy better have a damn good answer to this Jinx. It's at plus two, plus two, and behind a sub. And here comes Titar, but is this truly the answer here? You could pop the sub, sure, but now doesn't Jinx just kill you? This already looks like it might be a problem. Titar and Glalie down, and everything healthy, and one Mon revealed for Bull. So he's hoping that Flygon is faster than Jinx. And as it turns out, it is. So Crisis uh, averted, I, I guess. I mean, he's just flat out down a poke and all the spikes are down. And he loses Flygon here. This game is just unraveling and we're not even 10 turns in. And Flamethrower comes up short, but Surf doesn't thanks to a crit. What a disaster this game is for Jumpy. We are just 10 turns in. And this looks over. Fire Blast misses for Bull, giving Jumpy the tiniest window of opportunity. But he misses Sleep Powder right back. And this Fire Blast does not miss. Venusaur barely survives and gets the Sleep Powder off. So the tiniest sliver of hope, maybe. Celebi comes in stepping on spikes. And there's D-Knight, maybe. Non-Leech Seed Celebi and a Dragon Dance. Dragonite could maybe get there. And he does Dragon Dance up on a non-Leech Seed turn. Maybe, just maybe, there's a sliver of a chance for the DD sweep. Second DD. Psychic, okay. Plus two HP flying should kill here. Maybe Jumpy could... Mi oh. Uh, why would you go for the third Dragon Dance there? Why would you go for the third DD? I don't understand. Doesn't Hidden Power Flying just kill and then maybe you can win? The Moltres is at 100%. Even if it were to live a plus two Hidden Power Flying, it's on turn zero of sleep. And then, I mean, Bull had to reveal his team at the end. What were his other two pokes? Let me take a quick look here. Jolteon in the back, that would have been insta-killed, it would have been outsped and earthquaked, assuming that the Dragonite does in fact have Earthquake, which I would strongly assume to be the case. And the last one was Dugtrio for Bull. That's either a huge misclick or a, or a huge throw, I think, from Jumpy. He, he wins for sure if he just clicks HP flying there. Literally just gave the game away. I think the Dragonite would have absolutely cleaned it up. It one hit KOs the B from that HP. It one hit KOs the Dugtrio. It one hit KOs the Jolteon. The only thing is if the Moltres survived, woke up, insta killed him. But it's on turn zero of sleep. I don't, I don't even know if it can wake up. Uh, that is a complete, complete throw for Jumpy. And I mean, you're not going to see it on this replay. We're just going to go straight to the next game, but. I hope in real time he took a fucking minute and recomposed himself. That is just a massive Gaku level throw. If you guys have been watching my channel long enough, you'll get that reference. If you don't get it, don't worry about it. It was a long time ago. But it's one of the all-time great moments in Callus Invitational. CI2 specifically, I believe. That's tough for Jumpy, and Bull's going to take game one. It's two out of three for a reason. Jumpy totally capable of winning the next two, but... 
in this format especially, the difference between winning game one or not winning game one is really, really crucial, and that is a very tough way to not win game one. Uh, I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt that it was a misclick rather than a misplay. It's a pretty awful punt if that truly is just a just a misplay if he intended to do that. But I think it was a misclick. We'll see. Let's go to game two and see if he can rally back both mentally and in the game from that pretty huge mistake. Go ahead and switch those sides for continuity. Bowl on the bottom again. I'm the Dome Mace. That's Jumpy23 on the top. Here is the second game. Starmie Tauros leads. Starmie, if it's bulky, can stay in and eat an attack. Uh, likewise, it could just outspeed it and go for T-Wave, which is what happens. Then full para kicks in. Hydro Pump connects through in perfect accuracy. And Double Edge kills both of them with the damage and the recoil, respectively. So it's just a trade. Scizor comes out for Jumpy. But it's actually going to be Salamence on the bad end of the spore. I don't know if that's the greatest target, unless he can wake it up with Heal Bell on the back. Endure here, trying to take a big fat attack. And kind of awkward in hindsight because he didn't actually need the Endure. He would have lived the mash organically. He gets the reversal off and it does a lot, but it doesn't kill. And there's agility, so hopefully Scizor is faster now. And yes, it is. Silver win for the revenge kill. However, Mock Punch is going to put an end to any of those shenanigans. And he doesn't even get the Intimidate off. He goes straight to a Kingdra, which is going to be... Pretty hard walled by the slacks, and Jumpy might be in some trouble here. Return coming back. Jumpy fishing for freezes. Sees that as the only way out. And he only has one more turn to find it. Right now, it's freezer bust. And he does not ever find it, and he's probably dead. Mill tank? Maybe it can curse up alongside lax, but it doesn't seem to be doing that. He does get an immediate body slam power, but they're going to do less and less and less as the Lax curses up. And it seems to be a non-curse mill tank. It does have Heal Bell to wake up the Mence and in it comes, but without his own curse, this is going to be a tough ask. Going to go for DD and hope for bad sleep talks, which he gets. He finds rest both times. Here's DD number two. And there is the curse. So we're looking at plus one, plus two versus plus two, plus two. And he's going to try to flinch him. Unsuccessful in the first attempt as another curse comes down. Sandless game. HP flying. And return. That's going to do a fuck ton. He's going to need a crit or a flinch immediately. And he does not find it. And that should be game over. The only way out. He's not even going to play for it. The only way out. Would have been to come in as Miltank, Body Slam, Immediate Para, and Full Para, and then attack it down while getting multiple Full Paras until it dies. And even then, the Miltank would have to deal with the Breloom and then whatever else is in back for Bull. In other words, I don't think it's a premature forfeit. I think Jumpy at this point was pretty bone zoned. And that is an unfortunate way to go for the former Callus Invitational competitor in Jumpy 23, but. I said at the time, not revisionist history, even though Jumpy may or may not be the better player, and he didn't look like it in this set, I thought Bull had the stronger draft, and that certainly seems to be the way that it played out. Neither of these games, I, I mean, this one on paper, the first one, not overly close, kind of looks like a stomp, but it actually should have been Jumpy winning this game uh, with a terrible misclick or misplay, depending on how you want to look at it. And then this second game was just not close at all. Just a total beating bull giving him the business. Who knows how a potential game three would have played out. But with the stomp that we see here, we just never get there. But you've got to wonder what could have been if Jumpy had simply clicked HP flying instead of the third Dragon Dance. Then this game two happens and he loses. Fine. Then you go to a game three. And who the hell knows what could have happened, what would have happened in a game three. But as I've said a bazillion times on this channel, there just is no shoulda, woulda, coulda in Pokemon. That's not what happened. And the result that did happen and what is going to happen is a 2-0 victory for Bull, meaning he is going to go through to the round of 16 and Jumpy23, my pal, is going to be eliminated. And like I said, as far as coverage is concerned, 
that's going to be the end of the round of 32. I'm going to try to do as much as I can from the round of 16, but if you don't want to miss any of the action from the round of 32, every single replay is available in my Discord server, which, like I said, there is a link to in the description, and we are also accepting donations via a PayPal donation link if you want to support the tournament. Current prize pool, a little bit over 300 bucks. Would like to get it to five or 600 if we can by the end. No big deal if not, but that would be a nice goal. And if you guys have been enjoying the tournament or just want to see more content from me in the future, please consider hitting the like button and subscribing to the channel. Appreciate you guys watching, and I will see you in the next video.